the biggest model on the globe. And I wasn't afraid to say it. And when I would go in for an interview, if the interviewer would say, how does it feel to be the top black model in the world? I said, excuse me, I'm the top model in the world. I'm born and raised in Buffalo, New York. My father was a steel laborer, my mother was a nurse. I grew up swimming. I swam competitively. As a little girl, I was watching television with my father, and I remember watching the dogs being put on the people and the hoses and Martin Luther King. I remember it vividly. I was so stunned. All I could think of is that I'm going to be a lawyer. But before I went to college, my mother said, you have no clothes for college. You have to work in this shop on Main Street. But I worked in Jenny's shop as a lady who was the manager. She said, if you ever give up this idea about becoming a lawyer, you should become a model. And I'm thinking, excuse me, I'm going to be a lawyer. And the last day, she, she wrote out a name on a piece of paper, and she gave it to me. And I was you know, very kind and very polite. And I said, thank you, Mimi, and I'm putting it in my wallet. You see, I'm putting it right here in my wallet. I go off to school, I work at the YWCA, and then that summer I was going to stay and continue school, and I lost a job at YWCA. And one of my colleagues from New York City said, why don't you become a model? And I go, what is this modeling stuff? They literally pick up a magazine and they opened it up. And there was a girl, a blonde model, standing there with her hands on her hip. And she said, they make $75 an hour. I went, $75 an hour standing there with your hands on your hips? My father made $75 a week. And then I remembered that number. My predecessor was Naomi Sims. So when I came on the scene, Naomi Sims was, and still is in my eyes, a big star. She was really bigger than life. Right here. I came on the scene with you know, a 10 page spread and Glamour magazine and lots of covers and everything. And I wanted to do runway. Of course, my agent was like, why do you want to do runway? And I said, no, I, I want to get to know the designer. So I get that chance with Halston and they're waiting for Naomi to arrive. She's late, she's late. We can't start the show without her, you know, because she was the lead, you know, model and story. I'm in the corner doing my makeup, you know. And in she walks, of course, all in white, and she stands in the middle of the floor, and she looks over to, and she sees me in the corner. She runs over to me, and she grabs my hand, and she said, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you, and that I'm seeing all of your work, you're doing such a great job. Just keep going, keep going. She was so gracious to me. I've never forgotten it. And I said to myself that day, that is how I'm going to treat the other young models that are coming up behind me. I'm going to be as gracious as Naomi Sims was to me that day. I went for a tremendous agent and really was like a parent to me in the sense of really making me the model who I was at that time. So I had a meeting with Eileen Ford, first woman I ever saw, you know, real, real power. I said, you know, I want to have a cosmetic contract, I want to write a beauty book, and I want to have an American Vogue cover. She said, you'll never be on the cover of Vogue magazine. She was stating the truth. I didn't know that at that time. She added, who do you think you are? Cleopatra? I'm, I'm thinking to myself, that's exactly who I think I am, but you know, that was the smart mouth little girl I am. I knew that I wasn't going to get that cover there at that agency. So I wrote a really beautiful, charming note that I'm going to Wilhelmina, which was her competitor. And I would hope that if I ever changed my mind, that you would welcome me back. And that's how I, I, I left the agency, because nobody left Eileen for and lived to tell about it. I went to Wilhelmina, fabulous woman, walked in her office, she had her feet on the desk, and she had a slice of pizza in one hand and a cigarette in the other. I was like, oh my God, I love this woman. And she said, yeah, we'll get it for you. And she did. I will never forget that moment. It's one of the most exciting moments of my life, besides the birth of my daughter. And I didn't know I was the first woman of color on the cover of Road Magazine. It wasn't until people were interviewing me globally 
that, you know, how does it feel to be the first black woman on the cover of American Vogue? I'm like, I am. I was like angry at first because we had gone through the civil rights. We had overcome, we had arrived. And I realized that we hadn't. That put me on a, a journey of self-discovery of who I am, my roots, my heritage, and this whole idea of being black in America. It really woke me up. But it's the cover of Vogue, I made it. Listen, there was hundreds and hundreds of beautiful black women can you imagine, you know, coming out of the 60s, you know, the 70s? We had black modeling agencies. There were so many of us. The fact that the roulette wheel was rolling around and it stopped on me is really a blessing and honor that I wanted to make sure that I upheld throughout my career.